So in today's video, we're going to be watching the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Masters Guide. In 2003, Konami released this promotional DVD to help players learn how to play the game. It came with a starter deck Yu-Gi, a starter deck Kaiba, an exclusive copy of Dark Paladin as well, I believe. Thankfully, somebody has uploaded the full thing to YouTube, so we figured we would watch it and react to it, maybe provide a little bit of a flavor commentary and perhaps some information that you didn't know. And maybe by the end of this, we will be the real duel. Before we get into it, guys, if you like this video, you like our content, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. All right, let's hop in. Chapter one, prologue. Hi, duelists, it's me, Yugi, and the one and only Joey Wheeler. We're gonna tell you how to play the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. It's my favorite game, and I know it'll be yours too. Yeah, and if you perfect all the techniques in this DVD, you'll be a master duelist, like yours truly. Right, Yugi? Uh, you're a master duelist? What? You don't think I can duel? <laughs> I'm only kidding. Of course you can duel. Joey wasn't much of a duelist until he learned all these techniques. And now he's one of the best duelists in the world. Hey, you're embarrassing me. You don't have to lay it on so thick, even though it's true. Okay, so I just want to start by saying I think it's awesome that they got the anime voice actors for this. Oh, you like it? I hate it. Wait, why do you hate it? Because I just imagine Dan Green voicing little Yugi. And I don't see little Yugi in my head when I hear that voice. I see Dan Green, and it just takes me right out of it. Also, like, Yugi throwing shade at Joey, like, is this, like, a thing that they... I mean, we all just can't have a magical pharaoh that possesses their bodies and make sure they win everything. This Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game Duel Master's Guide will explain everything you need to know so that you can jump right into your very first duel. The object of the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game is to win a match against your opponent. Each player begins a duel with 8,000 life points. How many life points did you play with as a kid? 4K. Easy. I actually used 2,000 because that's what Duelist Kingdom used. But when I read the rule book and I was like, oh, it's 8,000. I was like, what? Where did this come your from? Your game is just to end it fast. These, these games are going like, to take forever. But I guess it technically like for the show, they probably had to have it be yeah, they, short. It would take forever if they were really trying to like work down 8,000 and, and have a cinematic sense. So far, we only explained the basic rules. Right. Now, we're going to delve into more detail in each chapter. Calm chapter down. 2, Preparation. She's a card now. To begin a duel, you need a deck containing a minimum of 40 cards. Oh my god, did they really not use sleeves in this? I mean, whose sleeves would they have used? Yeah, I guess that's true, but it's just like they're just showing the kids just unsleeved deck, just... Yeah, and we all did it, so they really, they just like, they just know what we're about. The set of cards you use in the duel is called the deck. Really, Joey? This is why the deck really must contain at least 40 <laughs> cards. Aside from this minimum limit, your deck can contain as many cards as you like. Also, you can have 15 additional cards in a separate pile. This is called the side deck. Between duels, you it, can exchange... Isn't it interesting that, uh... See, back then there was no limit to the deck size, but they did have a limit to your side deck size. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I guess because they didn't want kids to have, like... 100 card decks and 100 card side decks so that would take too long but apparently it was okay to have like a 100 card deck i think like a kid went to a tournament and he had like a 2000 card deck or whatever and like in case it's hard for you guys to imagine that it took multiple people to hold and transport his deck yeah like i'll put up a picture or whatever because i think there's a picture of it and like yeah they shuffling his deck like was this whole process and the deck list form was like 20 pages long and I think in around 2008 is when Konami finally decided, okay, this isn't okay. 60 card deck limit. I don't know why anyone even uh, gave that the time of day. Just immediately pick them out. Yeah, but I guess like as a kid though, it's like, you know, you want to fit all your favorite cards in your deck. and so... that, that kid had too many favorites. Kick them out. You're allowed a maximum total of three copies of the same card in your deck and side deck combined. So that's why Kaiba ripped the blue eyes. There can only be three. I actually always thought as a kid that that was the reason why you can only run three copies of a card was because like Kaiba he made it so by ripping the fourth, he ensured that no Yu-Gi-Oh card could be run it. Well, this is like a religious story. Kaiba ripped the fourth blue eyes and that's why we run everything in threes. Also, why didn't Kaiba just keep the blue eyes? Like he could have kept the blue eyes just in a binder. He really locals. wants to hurt that old man. Or like, what if one of the blue eyes gets damaged and he just needs like an extra copy? Oh no, Kaiba's cards never get damaged. Even though, didn't he throw cards? He threw a card. 
Anyway. You can only have one copy of each limited card and two copies of each semi-limited card. Hmm. So the ban list was out by then. Boy, I didn't know. Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder if kids, because like kids didn't pay attention to that, right? Like they didn't care. Huh. I don't think I even knew. I don't think I knew about the ban list until like. Like I didn't really know. Were a thing. Yeah, like maybe like when I started playing again in two thousand eight, I learned about it as a kid. None of this. Next, I'll explain the game that this field is where you place yeah. the cards and battle with them. The half of the field nearest you is your side of the field. You know, people say that Yu-Gi-Oh has gotten really complicated these days, but the basic game map's not like loads different, right? But right now it's not. But I mean, we've had a, a, a few iterations that were a bit murky. Yeah, Pendulums. I think Pendulums did the worst job to me of like making the game board just look yeah, hideous. Yeah, because things became like hexagonal more so than... Yeah, although Extra Monster Tangula. Zones were also a bit of a mess. Because like... What I didn't like about Extra Monster Zone is that they would go like halfway off the top of the mat. Right. And they had to like line up with your opponent. So like if your opponent's using a mat that doesn't have it, then it's suddenly this... But it's not so bad because even the scenes back then, there was an assumed space between your mats that where you could fit a fourth card. Yeah, and I guess... Or a yeah. fourth row. Monster Card Zone. This is the zone where you place a monster card. You can only have a maximum of five monster cards in the monster card zone at the same time. What's that one card that breaks that rule? The extra monster zone? No. Oh. Not the rule, the card. Remember? Um, uh, uh, Dark Sanctuary lets you use your... Right? Like, you can use your monster card zones as spell and traps for Destiny board. I don't know which, if there's anything else. The, the one that lets you summon more than five monsters. It was like a field oh, spell. Oh. Um, I feel like that was like Seal of Calcos, but that's in the yes. anime. No, not but like it's a real game. card. Yeah, yeah, but like, the real card's like not like that. Oh. Like the real cards just got some other effect. Oh, okay. I think. <laughs> they'll, they'll correct us. They'll, I, I, the people I, in the comments I, I, I don't know. know what it does. Fusion deck zones. If you use fusion monster cards, put your fusion deck here. The fusion deck consists of a group of fusion monster cards. This is actually a point that's definitely worth talking about. So, of course, the, the what's currently the extra deck used to be called the fusion deck, because there right. were only really fusion monsters. It didn't actually have a limit to how many cards you could have in it. Like, in theory, you could have a, a million, but, I mean, you probably wouldn't since I mean, they're you fusions. Would, yeah, for, like, just the mechanic, mechanical reasons, you wouldn't really want to run more than 15, I guess. Even then, is that's too many, because you only had three polymerizations. Yeah, they changed it when they changed the 60-card, like, deck rule as well. They made it, they called it the extra deck instead of the fusion deck, and then I think they that's when they did the 15-card limit. So, 5Ds. Stratified the game, and there were bit. only a few fusions for a long time. And they were always so specific; like it was like two very specific <laughs> and monsters. Bad. Like nowadays, <laughs> fusions are, are always like a hero and a dark monster or whatever, or like mm -hmm. contact fuse with any two glads. But now, but like back in the day, like it was like very specific. Right? So. Oh, they didn't talk about the chapter banish. three. Card yeah. details. It wasn't even called that back then. To make a strong deck, you need to know all about the features of the cards. There are three main card types. They are monster cards, spell cards, and trap cards. For those of you guys who don't know, Yu-Gi-Oh's spells used to be called magic cards, like how they called it in the anime. Mm-hmm. But that causes all kinds of issues with like mixed locals and trademarking because of Magic the Gathering. Yeah, so eventually they just changed it. So just a little fun fact. To win a duel, you must construct a deck that's well balanced with these three types of cards. Huh? And you have to use them efficiently. Hmm. Let's take a closer look at these cards so that you can develop your strategy. Do you ever miss just like the time when uh, kind of almost equal amount of like spells and traps like 20 and like, 20 monsters? monsters 10, you did that? Ten, yeah, 20, 10, 10 or like 20, 15, 5. Yeah, yeah, that was like a thing. It sucks because like now no one uses traps, even just between normal and effect monsters. You were kind of supposed to have some normals and like some effects and like it was a whole... You were? I, I, well, I that's kind of how I did. I mean, I didn't play too much back then, so... An effect monster with low attack points and defense points can sometimes take an important role during the duel. It's kind of funny. It's like the precursor to literally the end of Yu-Gi-Oh's right. life. You know? Our monsters are monsters, spells, and traps. Now, that... Nowadays, monster effects... Mo effect monsters will just end turns. Oh, if only they knew. Fusion monster cards. These monster cards are summoned by using two or more fusion material monsters, along with a spell card such as polymerization. As a kid, did you ever think that Flame Swordsman was like actually not a fusion? Well, monster? yeah, because he came out 
And I think everyone was surprised when he was a fusion monster and he had fusion material because in the show... Joey would just summon the thing. He never fusion summoned it. Yeah, he would just summon it. Like, Flame Swordsman. He's my monster. I think we saw him... Like, I think we saw Joey play, like, Masaki the Legendary Swordsman, one of the materials. But, I mean, Flame Manipulator, where'd that come from? I think in the... Even in the uh, show when he'd summon it, it, I think it was purple. Was it? Maybe, but he would still just summon it. Hmm. It was very weird. I don't know. It's Ritual more to monster it. cards. Oh. You can summon this special monster onto the field only when you fulfill the specific requirements by having the designated ritual spell card and the monster cards as a tribute. But would you say that like rituals maybe were technically better than fusions? I mean, as a kid, I remember everybody trying to use relinquish because all he cost was a one star yeah. tribute. But uh, I mean, fusions. Like, fusions, you had to have like two specific monsters and Polly. Whereas with this, it's like you just have to have a monster and a spell. Eh, eh, and the link was just strong compared to like all these the everything else. fusion monsters. Yeah, like as an effect monster, like at the time, Relinquish was pretty, pretty nuts. Like compared to Flame Swordsman, all he does is have attack. Attribute. There are six different attributes. We do sell attribute shirts. We've got all six or seven of them. So check out our Teespring if you want to buy one. I don't know. You must set trap cards face down on the field. And you can activate them after the start of your opponent's turn. Really? Ha, ah, that's funny. Yeah, Yugi would be really disappointed in trap cards today. Evenly matched. Impermanence. Yeah, red reboot, all these traps, you just activate them from your hand. Yep. Do you miss trap cards? Just like in general. Of course. I just I... miss when they were actually traps. When was the last time you saw someone play Trap Hole of all things? Yeah, and like Mirror any Force and Trap just... Hole. Now, let's develop strategies that reflect your fielding style to create your own personal powerful deck. I do miss this time where like your personal dueling deck, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was your favorite monsters, essentially. You know? Yeah, I think nowadays it's just, it really is like pick an archetype and just kind of like look up a profile of it, but... Chapter 4, Phases of Gameplay. What is what? It was like one of those like bad like fake like, Egyptian museums in Florida. Huh. It's all made of styrofoam. Who? So is he. Yeah. <laughs> and him. Her? Why are these him? Kids? Okay. Whoa. Okay. Wait. I like how this like faded in. If they don't get these PowerPoint transitions out of here. Also, why do the kids look so dead on the inside? Like, cause they're serious, Paul. They're they're this is like, a. They're in a real fake Egyptian set. I do wonder, like, where did they find this? Like this set. Like, like did they make this? There's no way. You know, I did an, 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 an like an Egyptian escape room in Florida once, and it looked just like this. Yeah, they just like went there and. Huh. If he, I, it might be the, it might be the exact same pieces. In the beginning, don't forget to say hello to your opponent and shake hands. Nobody does this. It's what? a shame that they don't, but nobody does. I this. can't remember the last time, you know, even outside of like COVID and things, I can't remember the last time I shook my opponent's hand before we even started. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to think that like these rules were in place. It's no, I just feel like no one like greets their opponent and shakes their hand. I mean, I greet my opponent, but like, I don't know. It's just like, what's up? Yeah. yeah. I guess they make it seem so formal here. Next, shuffle your deck thoroughly and hand it to your opponent. Great shuffling. Put your deck onto the deck zone in the game, Matt. That card is warped. Oh. That top card is warped. Yeah, yeah, you can see the curve in it. Yeah, look, if you look up there, like at the top, like it's like really. Is it, I wonder if it's always been like that, or did like just now while shuffling without sleeves, yeah. they bent it. They really couldn't give these kids card sleeves. Like make no. them just look like the back of a card. Like, God, Konami. These five cards are the first cards in your hand. All right, we gotta rate. Let's rate his. Uh, let's rate his opening hand. Mm. It's really blurry, but I think it's trap hole. Celtic Guardian, I don't know what the spell is. But it's got a Dark Magician. And a Winged Dragon Guardian of the Fortress. I think that Dark Magician was the warped card in the top. Oh, you're five probably dollars, right. Five dollars says you're it was. Chapter five, Battle and Damage. Battle oh, Damage. Are we going deep into this? We're gonna explain Apparently. more about the battle phase. One, start Ooh, step. Is, what? What is it? Like, like, what is he? Yeah, uh, what is he doing? Is he gonna like swing on his opponent now? Yes. Like what? Physically? Why is it? Chapter six. Sample duel. 
Hey. Oh, cool. Now let's watch an actual duel. Okay, we have to be like YouTube comments and like correct every little Yo, mistake they make. This is gonna be exciting. <laughs> Yugi draws the first card. Ah, it's Silver Fang. Miss Looks boy. like Yugi is taking a wait and see approach. Okay, why are you leave it crooked Kaiba though? Summon La Jin and attack Silver Fang. It's see, only Kaiba's first turn and Yugi's already lost life points. Yugi sets a monster. Ooh. Man, I've never seen him so cautious. Wow, that's Okazi. That spell card inflicts 800 points of damage. Kaiba ain't letting up. He summons battle locks and attacks. Say bye bye to Beaver oh, Warrior. Feel familiar. Now, Ka this feels so much like our actual duel. <laughs> like, we used battle locks and La Jin. And, like, I mean, I guess we didn't use some of the Yugi's, whatever this stuff is, but check out the video, by the way, if you haven't seen it. Yugi sets another monster. Whoa. But this time he also sets a trap. Too What's sad. he up to? Kaiba attacks Yugi's face down monster. But too bad for him, it's giant soldier of stone. Oh, and what a slap in the face. Huh? Yugi activates his trap card, Castle Walls, to inflict more damage. Increases the Wait, defense. so it already had 2,000 defense and he was going to take damage. Then he added Castle Walls? Yep, he wanted to make him take more damage. Okay. Big brain plays. It's Kaiba's turn to set something. Knowing him, it's gonna be something bad. Yeah, Fisher! With that spell card, Yugi destroys Kaiba's weakest monster on the field. I mean, okay. Yeah, this is is Yugi gonna finally attack? Nah, I guess not. <laughs> is he gonna attack? <laughs> is Yugi finally nah. gonna attack? Eh. But he, he sets another card. Why is he messing with our emotions like this? Yeah, I thought like Yugi's about to melt a comeback and then... Set another monster again. Why is he doing that? Uh-oh, just desserts. Yugi takes 500 points of damage for each of his monsters for a total of 1,000 points. Hey, you Your life that. points are down to 3,800 already, Yugi. Now what's Kaiba gonna do? Oh, oh I saw blue eyes. He summons Rogue Doll. But I guess he's not attacking because it's not strong enough to destroy giant soldiers. Now I can oh, flip it was man it. eat a bug. One of those effect monster oh, cards. Yugi used it to destroy oh. La Jin, and now he's offering it as a tribute to summon summon You Skull. got played. I guess that's actually a pretty cool play. Like flip the yeah. banner bug, pop the threat, tribute Tribute. It, summon skull, swing over the rogue doll, I hope. And like Oh, Kaya, but that's some poor play. Yeah, for real. Like Yugi's kind of what an awesome combo! Now Yugi's got the strongest monster on the field. Yugi switches Giant Soldier of Stone from oh, defense no. position uh -oh. to attack position. It's about time Yugi started launching a serious offensive. Yugi takes out Rogue Doll with his summoned skull, leaving Kaiba wide open for attack by Giant Soldier of Stone. Nobody would have advised him to do this. And he also uses Diane Keto to restore his life points by a thousand. It's so interesting. Do you remember back when like life point altering, like Ukazi and like Diane Keto were like. You would like play them in your deck, like yeah. in case you know you gotta get those life points. Yeah, just in case. I don't know if I've ever won a game because of it though. Yeah, but as a kid, it gets everything. You yeah, know? you just had to run it. Never mind. I think Kaiba is starting to feel the heat. He sets a monster. Looks like the tide's turning, but Yugi still can't afford to make the slightest mistake. Yugi plays the field spell card Yami, increasing the attack points and defense points of his fiend and spellcaster type monsters, such as his summoned skull, by Did 200. Yugi ever use Yami? Giant isn't go. strong enough to withstand that attack. And now, with direct damage, Yugi takes the lead. Kaiba looks like he's really struggling now. He sets another monster. It's so funny today, like if you're setting monsters like that, you're done. Yeah, the game's over. Yeah, it's just interesting that I guess in this period of time though, Giant Soldier probably couldn't swing over it, and like Summon Skull would just destroy it, and that's like, that's it, basically. What blows my mind is he hasn't been, have been punished for this attack mode Giant Soldier yet. That, too. Kind of could at least kill that, but... Ooh, Dark Magician. I see it. You get with the Summon Skull! Wow! Hane Hane! Oh, it's Wait, Hane, it's called Hane Hane? Hane? I didn't know. I never, today, like, I was today years old. Me too. Literally, like, Me I did too. not know what's going on. We are newborns. Huh. huh. Kaiba got out of that jam. Hane Hane is an effect monster that bounces one monster back to its owner's hand. Wait. Wait. Why didn't he bounce Summon Skull? Yeah. I really feel like a YouTube commenter now. Like, why did he do that? Like, but really, though, like, he why? Said, he, that, that, 
It's literally it's gaining attack too. Yeah, that was so like strange. Like giant soldier. Okay. It's not our worst position to be in. No way! It's the spell card, Dark Hole. It destroys all monsters on the field. He could have so saved Yugi loses it. his summon skull, and he's wide open for direct damage. Lord of D. And the flute of summoning dragons. Oh my God! Oh! Oh! Special oh. His mighty blue eyes, white dragon. Wow. This deck's gonna totally trash you with the tiny chunks. That was on Jesus. Check it. out your life points. Whoa, that's actually like a pretty big comeback play. It's huge. It's actually interesting. Like, I still, I mean, I guess the dark hole makes sense, maybe. I don't really know. Is this what it's like, like Look, watching Yugi tubers misplay when you watch them? I still would have been better just to use Honey Honey's effect on the summon skull. Yeah, that's true. That's. Anyway. You only have 400 points left! But if I know Yugi, he won't give up until the very end! The trap hole is not gonna save you. Yugi sets two cards. And oh! Sets a monster card in defense position! Kyber summons a monster. What is that? And Yugi destroys it with trap hole! Is that Iron the Mage or something? Mystic Horseman? Mystic Horseman, I think. Why does it look so weak? Oh, okay, I see it now. But Yugi activates Waboku to prevent his monster from being destroyed. Waboku. Man, I can't believe Yugi managed to make it through the turn. Question, what card is that in Kaiba's hand? Wait, what? What card is that in Kaiba's hand? That's a removed trap. That, that is definitely used. a removed trap. That he, he could have used. Can Yugi hmm. stage a counterattack? Change of heart. Oh, that wow. gives him control of one of Kaiba's monsters. Huh? Uh. <laughs> He's offering them as a tribute to summon... Yeah! Dark Magician! Wh what? I don't... Wait. <laughs> this is killing me. You had change of heart and you didn't just steal <laughs> blue eyes? He left the blue eyes on board. It's bigger than Dark Magician. This yeah. really must be what it's like watching like Yugi tubers just misplay and like... <laughs> I understand. I have sympathy for the comments oh my now. God. Okay, so like, what's he gonna? I mean, Yami doesn't even give he it enough. He set a trap. It better be something to boost Dark Magician when it gets attacked. Yugi finally summoned the most powerful monster in his deck, but Kaiba's blue eyes still has higher attack points. What are you gonna do? He has Yugi? removed trap. Just played her. Attacks with his blue eyes. Reinforcements. Who do we have that card? Combined <laughs> with Yami's attack boost, Dark Magician defeats blue eyes. I've never. I've never. Wow. And there's the final blow. That's the game and the end of the duel. This time, the Yugi deck won the duel, but the Kaiba deck was also pretty powerful. Huh. Wow. I have a lot more sympathy for YouTube comments now. That was hard to watch. But I guess it's probably like how kids would have played it back in the day. Like, probably, right? I don't know if kids were that bad. Chapter 7. More details and epilogue. In this chapter, we're going to let you in on some secret information that I guarantee will help you in your duels. I don't trust oh. that. Not after what we just saw. First, your chances of drawing an important card increase if you keep the number of cards in your deck close to 40. That's actually legit advice. It is. Well, like for at a least change. it was. You will have strategic disadvantages if there are too many cards in your deck. Yes. That's the also, one. That's the you kid. Should keep the ratio of monster cards to spell and trap cards at 50-50. Yeah. It's difficult to duel if there are too many monster cards or if there are too many spell and Oh, trap cards. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're yeah. saying. You can run 20 monsters and 20 spells. Yeah, that's that's closer to 2020s. Yeah. 2020, 20 monsters, 20 spells. Oh, yeah. you cracked the code. You One more thing to busted consider cards. is the number of high-level monster cards in your deck. If you have too few low-level monsters, you'll often find it difficult to summon a high-level monster during crucial stages of the duel. Who runs high I'm sure monsters? the high attack points of these high-level monsters attract you, but you won't be able to win if you only use high-level monsters. You ain't really out here trying to, like, not make people break, even in 2003. Try to include as few high-level monsters as possible when constructing your deck. Or none. Second, I'm going to tell you about the technique of oh. combining cards to duel effectively. All right, we're about to learn some yeah. combos. Here we go. Here we go. All right, I want a one card, four negate, plus 11. Let's go. Otherwise known as combos. The Raigeki and Monster Reborn combo. Uh. First, 
activate right yet. There's more to this, right? This spell card can destroy all your opponent's oh. monsters and send them to the graveyard all at once. Second, activate Monster Reborn right after. What's the chances of these two limited cards? Yeah, these cards are like both like limited or something. Like, how are you gonna have them? I, mean, I get that it's you know it's a combo, and obviously you can just pull this off turn one. But you know, Calm. it's a two card combo, oh. Alec. You know, was the rudest thing back in the day when Here's your opponent monster burns you your special monster. Special summon the monster from your opponent's graveyard as your own monster. Since there are no monsters on your opponent's side I can't of the field, what that is. you can inflict uh, huge battle damage to your opponent's eyes, life probably. points using his or her own powerful monster. Yeah, it is. yeah. The change of heart and high level monster combo. Oh. Stop! That's not. That is not a combo. Yes, it is, Alec. That. <laughs> it's a two card combo. No, it. No, it's, that's not your card. Yeah, it is. You should definitely try this combo if you have both change of heart and any high level monster in your hand. First, oh, activate I see. the spell card Change of Heart to take control of one monster on your opponent's side of the field. This monster will be returned to your opponent's side of the field at the end of the turn. So let's offer this monster as a tribute to summon your high-level monster. Now there are no more monsters on your opponent's side of the field, while only your high-level monster remains on the field. As a bonus, the monster you took control of with Change of Heart will not be returned to your opponent's side of the field. Think the the Man-Eater Bug and High-Level Monster Combo. Man-Eater Bug can destroy one monster on the field when it is flipped from face down to face up. This effect comes in very handy. First, set Man-Eater Bug on your side of the field. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On your next turn, you can offer this Man-Eater Bug as a tribute to summon your high-level monster. However, before you offer the Man-Eater Bug as a tribute, flip it face up to destroy one monster on the field. After destroying one monster on your opponent's side of the field, Summon your high-level monster by offering the face-up man-eater bug as a tribute. That's it for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Trading Card Game Duel Master's Guide. But don't let your guard down. You should get more booster packs or exchange cards with your friends to enhance your deck. Right! Also, collecting cards is lots of fun. The more you play this game with your friends, the more fun you'll have. No doubt about it, Yugi. And make sure to check the rulebook and website to learn more about the rules. I'm telling you, it's a long road to become a champion duelist. Definitely. But the only way to get better is to keep playing. And then no one will stand in my way, including you, Yugi. I don't think so. There's no way I'm letting you beat me. Oh, yeah? Then take out your deck and let's see who's better. Unless you're too scared to face me. Scared of you, Joey? Never. Then let's get started. It's time to duel! I will say this, in the context of the time it was released, I actually think this probably did a really good job of, like, weeding out some common misconceptions kids probably have about, like, you know, summoning and face-up defense, or, like, you can't change your monster's battle position. You know, that would have and... cleaned up, like, you know, a schoolyard play quite a bit. Yeah, like, it, it tidies things up. I like that they had the, the voice actors, I think that's pretty cool. The, the weird kid actors seemed a little... Like, creepy? But I think it would have been creepier if the voice actors were doing it. I also think it would be weird if it was adults. It, right? Like, so, I mean, what would you rate this, like, just all in all, like, as a as a kid seeing it and then as, like, now? Okay, if I was a kid watching this, 10 out of 10, I'd learn to play just as badly as they do. Yeah. Now, um, a solid 4. I think that, as a kid, like, 20 out of 10. Awesome. Now, even though I would give it, like, a 4, it would still be cool if Konami released something like this today. Like, updated, of course, with more modernized like, rules and stuff, but, like... Do they have enough time? Yeah, probably. Yeah, the rules change every other month. But I don't know, I think it could be neat, because, like, Yu-Gi-Oh's gotten really complicated these days, it's and, like... so complicated. It just kind of makes me think, like, maybe this could be a cool thing? It would have to be a box, like, Blu-ray set. Just, yeah, just like, here's the damage step. It's like a whole <laughs> it's a, it's volume by volume. itself. <laughs> Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Um, be sure to remember to subscribe. Let us know in the comments, uh, what did you think of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Masters guide? And should there be a new one? Yeah, should there be a new one? Did you get this as a kid? All kinds of things. Anyways, it's gonna be it. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Fast turn. turn.